How does the world champion Magnus Carlsen sacrifice his pieces? Introducing his opponent, Vladimir Fedosev. He's 26, ranked 31st in the world, from Russia. These games took place in the FIDE World Cup. At the end, I'm going to show the final table. First up, Fedosev has white, Carlsen has black. D4, knight f6, c4, g6, and now h4. Fedosev is a very aggressive player. With this move, you're actually planning to attack black's pawn chain with h5 in the future, and then take on g6. Bishop g7. At the moment you can't play h5 because black has a knight guarding at square. Knight c3, d6, and we get e4, the king's Indian. And white has played this funny looking move, this very aggressive move. But let's find out how this move backfires. Knight c6, Magnus attacks the center straight away. The queen defends it. But now Fedosev goes d5. By the way, both sides start with 1 hour 30 minutes plus 30 seconds per move. Knight e5, and now bishop e2. The point of this move is white wants to go f4 next to attack the knight. So you go h5. So white cannot play f4 now because now knight g4 and you've got a good spot for the knight. It's actually being defended by a pawn, the other knight, and the bishop. After bishop e2, black gets a square with h5, and now bishop f4. Castle, knight f3, take. And an interesting decision here, he takes with a pawn. I would take with a bishop here. Then white can actually castle. c6, castle, and play this kind of position, take, take. I feel this is much better than what actually happened in the game. So he took with a g-pawn, c6, black has to break up the center, queen d2, take, take. Now king h7, a4, knight d7, so a cool move to reroute the knight. The knight can sit on e5 or c5 later. This bishop is now in the game, and we have f5, which is a very important move because you want to go for a pawn break to free your pieces. White gets space with a5, and now f5. So at the moment, nothing to worry about because the queen defends the bishop. Or maybe this is exactly what white needs to be worried about. Rook a3, the point of this move is so then you can play b4 next. Also giving a knight some defense. Knight e5, bishop back, and now f4. So, Carlsen, he doesn't open it up, he goes f4 because he's got a very key idea coming up. It looks like it just chucks a pawn. Well, it does, but this is part of the sacrifice. Bishop d7, knight d1, no point moving the bishop again because now he can go rook takes f3. Take, loses, knight takes f3, check winning the queen. So after bishop takes f4, bishop d7, knight d1, and now Carlsen goes for the exchange sacrifice, which is what I mentioned at the beginning. You're giving up a rook for a minor piece. Five points for three points. Rook takes bishop. Take. Bishop h6. So why does he do it? It's because this bishop is much better than this rook. This bishop is going to control so many dark squares. Queen g3. Queen f8. Really cool move. Controlling the f4 square and the truth is this rook is out of the game. This is really going to be a key takeaway from this video. It's okay to sacrifice the exchange, sacrifice a rook for a minor piece, when the other guy's rook is doing basically nothing. Knight e3, bishop f4, queen g2. This bishop is just so strong, controlling so many dark squares. Rook c8, you get the file. Rook c3, take, take, queen c8. So notice... White's pieces are just totally boxed in. He's playing on basically a 4x4 four four grid. c4 and now b5. Carlsen can do almost anything on the queen side because white's pieces are not even there. He goes for a pawn break with b5. Or on pass on. Take, take. Queen g1. The point is so then maybe the king can go to f1 and then to g2 and then maybe his pieces can actually get in the game. Queen a8. King f1. But queen a2, Carlsen is just in time to stop the king moving. To stop white regrouping his pieces, queen attacks the bishop, knight g2 you attack, and throw in a check, the knight drops back, and queen b2. Attack the bishop, check, knight e1, and queen d2. So what do we have here? A really cool journey from the queen. All made possible because black sacrificed the exchange. This bishop is absolutely perfect controlling very important dark squares. The queen has just come round. Queen went from d8 to a8 to a1, b2, c1, d2. Queen g2, king g7, rook g1, king f8. 
Is black going to march his king over to the queen side? No. He doesn't need to. Knight still guards his pawn. White is trying to unravel, and the truth is he can't. Queen h1, basically doing nothing. e6 going for a pawn break. Rook g3. You know your position is bad when you've got to play a move like rook g3, and you hope black actually takes this rook. And the cool thing is Carlson doesn't need to take the rook, because the truth is this bishop is so strong. What is the point in taking a rook that is basically doing nothing? He takes, takes, now this bishop gets in the game. Bishop f5. Rook back to g1. King f7. Rook g3. Knight d7. Just rerouting his pieces. He can do what he wants. There's going to be a breakthrough coming up. Rook g5. Threatening to take. So now Carlson takes this rook. Take, take. Now he comes back with knight e5. And with this position, in this position, White resigns. He can't do anything. He can't actually move. So if we played on a bit, if you go f4, you can't. You lose the pawn. How do you get this queen in? You can't. This pawn is very powerful. This pawn is going to drop very soon. Queen here, knight takes. And when that drops, you can run your pawn down this board. Really, white is a queen down. That's why he resigned. He's basically a queen down. He cannot do anything. Let's say knight g2. Check. Force the knight back. And you can cash in it if you want. Take. Check. King moves. Take. Two pass pawns. That knight can't even get back in the game. So a totally crushing victory. Let's check out the next game. So it's really, really cool actually. Carlson plays Felicity twice and he does the same. He does the same sacrifice. E4, C6. So we have the Karo Khan. D4, D5 and E5, D advance. Bishop F5. White can play H4. White can play G4 to get space. But today Carlson played C4. E6. Defending your center. You get a very solid triangle set up. Knight c3, you attack the pawn twice, and bishop b4, pin the knight. Take, and in this position, black has a few moves. You could take with a pawn, the other pawn, or the queen. And today, Fedosev chose to take with the queen. One option is just to take with a pawn. And you get this solid structure. Also, black needs to win this game, or else, really, he gets fourth place in the World Cup. Queen takes d5. Using the pin on the knight. Knight e2, really cool move. The knights defend each other. Queen back to d8. So why has black done this? It's because then this pawn could be a target. a3, drop the bishop back. Knight g3, attack the bishop. And knight e7, not retreating. Because if white takes, then black can take. And now he's got some pressure on the d-pawn. So Carlson, he doesn't take the bishop. He goes bishop c4. Bishop now drops back and h4. That bishop is a target. h5 almost traps it. So black gives some space. h5, bishop drops back and queen g4 attacking the pawn and king f8 played and basically with this move it is very difficult to get that rook in the game. One brilliant option here is actually to play a fantastic move, bishop f5 because you cannot take this pawn because there's some funky way, there's this really really cool way to trap the queen. Rook h7. The bishop actually defends the rook, and the queen is out of squares. If you go queen f6, knight d7 traps the queen. There's no good square for the white queen, so maybe he gets a bishop and a rook for it. Take, take with check. King can just park itself on d7, and black is winning. Very, very cool move, bishop f5. Queen g4, king f8, castle. Knight d7, knight e4, coming into d6, so bishop c7 stops that. Bishop just drops back to a2. This is a normal move, because in this position, maybe black will actually hit white's bishop with b5, so you just drop it back anyway. Knight f5, take, take, queen, back to f3. Queen e7, defending the d6 square, knight g3. White has played this move twice in this game, knight g3 attack the bishop, drop it back, and now queen g4. Clearing the f-file for the rook. You're going to go f4, f5, open it up against the king. White is taking over. c5, pawn break. You are trying to free your position, but your king is not safe. Bishop d2, a really, really cool move. You cannot take. Because bishop b4 and you win the queen. Bishop d2, rook d8. f4, let's go. Knight b6, bishop c3. Same trap again, can't take the pawn. Knight d5, f5, he just gets on with it. Knight e3, 
So you fork the queen and the rook, but this is the purpose of this video. Magnus is not afraid to sacrifice a rook for a minor piece. Five points for three points. He just goes queen f3. It doesn't matter. Remember, this is the key takeaway in this video. If your opponent's rook is doing nothing, it is okay to sacrifice a rook for a minor piece. The rook in the corner. It's not in the game. Knight takes f5. He doesn't even take it. If you take it, the pressure is going to be too much. You don't take the pawn. You just build the pressure. So if black relieves the pressure with this capture, now you can take with the knight. This knight is very strong. Get rid of it. Take, take. And there's too much pressure on f7. This bishop is in the game. If you try to give something back, by the way, I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. You can't play this because of this. If you try to give something back, rook takes d4, take, take. You can take on f7, but you can even throw in this check first, because then the rook can take on f7. You give up the queen for the rook and the bishop, but black, he's just going to lose. White's just going to take all the pawns. So after queen f3, after this fork, queen f3, knight takes pawn. Take, take. Losing a pawn, but we got a breakthrough in the center with d5. You cannot take the pawn because you lose your bishop. d5, this is a breakthrough. Bishop b6, threatening a check. So you don't even give black any chance. King g8. King h7, trying to actually get this rook in the game. d6, attack the queen. Queen h4, you attack the bishop, but Carlson is very calm. He just defends it. Rook d7, because it defends b7 as well, and f7. This queen was attacking b7. Queen drops back. Queen g4, offering a trade, but now... Here we go. I mean, this is the purpose of this video. How does Magnus Carlsen keep sacrificing? No, no, no. Say that again. And here we go. This is the purpose of this video. Magnus Carlsen sacrificed the exchange. He goes rook takes f5. It doesn't matter. The queens are being attacked. Queen takes rook was played in the game. But what happens if we get a queen trade? Maybe the attack is dying. No. The attack has just begun. Take, take, attack the rook. You can go rook f1. Let's attack the rook. Bishop b5. Rook drops back and bishop back to c4. Black can't move the king because you take. And if rook d7, e6 is there. Rook f1, just build the pressure. You can't go g6 because of this. Black's position completely collapses. So after queen g4, rook takes bishop. We have the exchange sacrifice. Take, rook f1. Queen g5, bishop d2 attack the queen. Queen goes back to d8 and queen g4. So here we go again. The queen has gone to this square. I think white has played this move three times in one game. Queen g4. Facing the king. a6. Black can hardly move. With a6, Carlsen, he's not stopping here. He's just continuing to sacrifice. Not a rook for a bishop, but only... <laughs> only, I say, but it just works out beautifully. Sacrifices a rook for a pawn. Rook takes f7. Take. Queen takes e6. Check. Now, there's a dubious symbol. Question mark, then an exclamation mark, just to show it's not actually the best move. There was a brilliant way just to come in. We take with the bishop. Notice all the red circles are all the squares the king cannot go to, so the king can only go to e8 or to f8. So let's say he goes back. Check. King f8. And now, really cool idea. Take the rook. Take. And now e6. And there's no good way for black to defend f7 if you go queen d6. That is mate. But if you go e8, trying to offer a queen trade, you go e7 check, and there's no good way for the king to defend the queen. Take, come back, and mate. So that would have been a really cool way for Magnus to finish. But in the game, he took with a bishop. No, say that again. In the game, he took with a queen. King back, check, 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 check. And now he goes e6, so Magnus has worked this out. Can't take on d6 because queen f7 is mate. So, Fedeceev tries to relieve the pressure by offering a queen trade with queen f6. Take the rook. Take, take. Any check, it will be mate. The king can't move. Bishop d8. Bishop e 6 h5, trying to get the rook in the game. But Magnus has this incredible setup where it boxes the rook in. This rook has not seen the light of day. King f2, h4. And this is the cool setup. Black wants to go to h5, but you stop it with bishop g4. And the rook can't get out. 
b5, king in. Pawns just totally restricting the black king. King f3, b4, doesn't matter, take take, king e4. And in his position, black resigned. If you try to get the rook in the game, let's play on a bit with rook h6. You can take it because there's this uh, cool, uh, cool tactic here. Cool deflection, I just want to show you. Because this is how I thought he would win the game. King up, king here. You defend the pawn, king here, and do you move the bishop? No, just king c6, because you can't take the bishop because g7. This is the deflection idea I saw. I thought this was <laughs> how Magnus was going to win the game. King a5, doesn't matter. King in, a4, you just take it. b3, just king there. That's cool. Take, doesn't matter now. g7. That's a cool thing. Watch this. Queen, queen, and you win the queen. Check. Here is the results table. Magnus Carlsen takes third place in the World Cup, beating Fedesev 2-0. Winner of the World Cup was Jan Duda because he beat Sergei Kayak in one and a half half. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned how Magnus Carlsen sacrifices the exchange. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It really does help out the channel. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so then you'll get notified each time I release a new video. I got a nice selection for you if you want to stick around. Magnus Carlsen's World Cup Queen Sacrifice. And I got another beautiful game over here. How does Magnus Carlsen play against the Sicilian at the World Cup? Thanks for watching.